Welcome to the introduction of the storage bot. So, as a maker, what I found was after many years, I would collect a bunch of parts and I would typically store the parts in these storage bins. And these are fairly cheap. Uh, this one costs $15 from Harbor Freight. But what I found is after a while, I would collect hundreds if not thousands of parts. And the issue would be during a project, I would have problems finding the parts because I had so many bins. So I thought, what if you could use modern technology to help solve this problem? And that's when I came up with the storage bot. So let me illustrate. Listen now. Washers. Flat. Quarter inch. Locate. Locating bin. Unit four. Please wait while I reposition. Thank you. Waiting for next command. Washers. Welcome to the second demonstration of the storage bot. Uh, the real power of the storage bot is when it can find not just one bin, but multiple bins. Because that really saves you a lot of time. Um, the best example of that is when you're trying to find kind of that part that doesn't really have its own category. Um, I found that I'll have a lot of bins that contain what I call junk parts. You know, basically an assortment of screws that really don't belong anywhere, but that I'll typically eventually look at if I can't find the part anywhere else. And I'll have many of these junk bins. Um, with the storage bot, I can easily find all of those bins. So let me illustrate. Listen now. Screws. Assortment. Small. Locate. Locating bins. E10. G14. J10. Please wait while I reposition. Thank you. Waiting for the command. All right, so here's a video of why I think this stuff matters. Um, it's really not about being able to build a storage spot. It's about all the skills you learn to create something like a storage bot. Um, what I can tell you is when I came up with the storage bot, I didn't reinvent the wheel. Uh, I was able to use a lot of technologies that are readily available. Uh, for example, uh, the thing that controls the storage bot, the electronics, is based on something called an Arduino. Right? It's a little computer on a chip that makes it very easy to talk to electronics, uh, it makes it very easy to talk to a computer. Um, to move things, I use something called stepper motors. Right? Stepper motors are readily available. Uh, they're used in things like uh, the MakerBot, a 3D printer. Right? I have one here to illustrate that. This is extremely popular, but it has three or actually four stepper motors. Uh, something else that uses stepper motors is the ShopBot. ShopBot is a big CNC machine and it has stepper motors in there. Um, another thing I utilized was um, rail and belt systems that are very common and easy to build. So in the back of this machine, 
The way the magic happens is you have a lot of linear motion controlled by motors. And to create that linear motion for motors, you need a way to convert a rotation into a back and forth motion. So using something like a belt and a stepper motor is an easy way to go from the rotation on the end of the stepper motor to a linear motion along the belt length. Uh, so that's used quite a bit in something like a MakerBot. You can also take stepper motors and connect them directly to gears and then use the gears to drive the joints of something like a robot arm. And that's what this is over here. This is actually an extremely old robot arm from the 80s, but it has a bunch of stepper motors. And the stepper motors drive gears, which are linked to a pulley system that moves all the joints in the robot. So again, you know, it's taking a commonly available technology and it's applying it in a different area. Um, so right now it's really an exciting time. There's just so much available to us. And I think the thing that encourages me is I see so many successful companies that have taken very basic ideas and be, been able to build um, really cool businesses. Um, you know, there's no reason why you can't be the next shop bot or the next maker bot or the next Adafruit Industries. Um, it's something that excites me. Uh, so I encourage everyone to, you know, dream big. Uh, but start small and basically, you know, just try to make the future happen. You know, what are you waiting for? Just go for it. I'll meet you there. Thanks a lot. Okay, so welcome to my final video. I figured since the storage spot was being entered into the shop bot contest, I would describe what I would use a shop bot for. Um, so I'm really big into home robots, and several years ago, I actually entered a contest by iRobot hosted on Instructables, where I built this robot here. Um, it's a home robot based on the iRobot crate, and it has an arm on there. And it was able to do some pretty cool things, like water plants, control your TV. You could teleoperate it, play music, etc. Um, it's been almost five years since I made this. Um, I've recently been working on the next generation of this. And that's what this robot is here. I can't show it to you, that's why it's under a white sheet. But as you can tell, it's a lot bigger. And there's a reason why it's bigger. Because this robot is essentially a bigger version of this. Um, the important thing is it's going to have arms on it so that you can do really useful things like opening up a refrigerator or opening up the doors in your house. And it's all programmed by a computer. You know, you can run whatever code you want on there. But a lot of the things that you find in the spot are actually in the storage spot. You know, it uses stepper motors, it uses an Arduino, uh, it uses different types of drive systems to produce linear motion. Um, but where I could use a, uh, a shop bot is really in three areas. Um, this uses a lot of thin aluminum and quarter inch ABS plastic. So something like a shop bot could easily cut those materials. Um, and the third thing I would use it for is uh, I have some plastic panels on here that are vacuum formed and an easy way to make wooden molds for the vacuum form machine would be using a shop bot. So this is something that really excites me. Um, I will introduce it to the world probably in about six months but let me end by giving you a little teaser um, into this next generation home robot of mine.
Until next time, thanks for watching.